Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I did a video yesterday covering uh, Luria in the Cursed City taking on Bommel and actually got really good feedback from the video. People were pleased that there were some more kind of like low level options to help people get through some levels they're stuck on. Um, so firstly, thank you for that feedback. And there was a number of people in the comments saying, help me kill this Scarab boss in Dead Rise. So Dead Rise is pr uh, proving like the next big challenge for people. So we're going to focus on that today, but I'm also going to talk you through almost like my mindset of how do I go about trying to beat these challenges. So the Scarab boss is a tough boss, yeah? I would say he's almost tougher the more champions you bring, right? So I'm going to show you a couple of different epics uh, which can get this job done for you, one of which we're seeing here, which is uh, Anax. But yeah, I'm going to talk, kind of talk you through why you don't really want to bring like a big squad of champions to help you with this. I also show you like, first thing I do, and this is legitimately what I do, I come to hellhades.com, a website I own, and I come to the raid stages tool, and I'm like, right, what are we up against? Yeah, so you can go to Cursed City of Sintranos, you can go to Dead Rise, uh, we'll start with normal, and then we stick on stage nine, okay? So we're like, right. Bommel, how powerful is he? Uh, not Bommel, uh, Bordoff. How powerful is he in this iteration? Yeah, he's not the same as the um, the Doom Tower ones. We've also got no waves to get through first, which makes it much easier. You just have to focus in on the boss. And we see here he's got 150 speed. Okay, so we want to make sure we're considerably quicker than him. Ideally, I'd say if someone's going 150, we'll probably want to try and go at least 200. Yeah, you want to. You want to eventually get to the point where you lap him now and then. But if, as long as you're going more than 150, at least you're going one for one with him, which is not terrible. Okay? But ideally, you want to pump a bit of speed. Now, he has got 205 resistance. So you want to bring about 230 accuracy to land any abilities. That's another important stat. And then it's just kind of like, well, with someone like Borgoff, we can't hit him to death because... All the time he's got that massive shield on, the purple shield, he takes no damage. Okay, so we need to find another way to do damage to him. So they're the things I'm looking at. Also, we can flip it onto hard, uh, hard stage, stage nine, and just see what the difference is. It's, it's just worth knowing, right? So his level's higher, fine. His speed's actually the same. His accuracy requirement is exactly the same. So the only thing we need to... I just deal with is the fact he's going to hit us harder. That's the only change that I, I, I'm concerned about. He's going to hit us for more damage. Okay, so actually that's good to know. It's good info. So it means the same build might be able to work between normal and hard with the same champ. So what I do then, I come into game and I'm like, right, how do we want to try and beat this guy? You can go with like the full team approach. And if you're an optimizer user, you can actually go onto the optimizer and find this stage and see what teams have beat it with champions that you own. So that's quite a useful tool if you use that. But you could go with like the full team approach, which means you're going to need shield champions running fast. Yeah, and you need someone who's able to apply. In fact, 99% of people do not use this tool. And for City of Sintranus, I think it's, it's the best tool that Raider ever put into the game. I didn't really use it before the Cursed City. But for this, I use it a lot. So I'm coming into buffs here, and I'm like, who can apply shields, right? Who, who have we got? Who's available? So uh, I'm looking for shield buff. Now, I'd prefer for it to, to let me do team-wide shield buff, but we can't have that right now. So now I'm looking through, and I'm like, right, who here is applying a, a shield for my team? Okay, well, I've got Warlord. I've got Ultimate Death Knight. We come a bit further back, and I'm like, this is where sometimes you find some gems, by the way. Valerie is a genuine option. Two Valerie's is a better one because she puts a shield out for the whole team. So she could be an option. Uh, I'm looking at this guy. I'm like, what the hell do you do around shields? Shield for the whole team on a four turn. This guy could be a genuine option. It goes out for three turns. So Zelatar plus Valerie is actually an answer to this fight. Yeah. So Zelatar, the, the vault hero plus Valerie could be your answer if you just are struggling to do what I'm about to show you. Okay, so that surprised me. Okay, about this dude. Tagore places a shield on allies for two turns on a five turn. It's too long. That's not going to help us. Azure. 
places a shield on this champion. That's not going to help us. And then discard places a shield uh, on this champion. So he, on a three turn, he could potentially solo it. Okay. Um, but he's not ideal. The ideal way to kill this guy is with poison. So let's take shields off a minute. And then the, the thing which I just done was like, right, well, who have I got as an option as a poisoner? And again, we kind of go through the list and depends what you're doing here. So if you have got any form of blood shield accessory, this boss is tons easier because you're not going to get counterattacked at all. So if you're looking at your team and you're like, well, do I have any? Do I have I earned any single blood shield accessory for any of these champions um, from Clan Wars? Yeah, this blood shield one here. If you have, then this becomes tons easier because what happens is every time you hit uh, the Scarab King, you place a shield and it goes on before he realizes that you didn't have a shield before you hit him, which means that you don't force to counterattack every single time. Yeah, so someone like an Anax here. Is only going to work if I've got a blood shield accessory on because his poison ability and poison's what I want is not on his A1. Okay, so I'll show you this first, but there's actually a bunch of different options. So you don't really want, I was thinking maybe I could use Grave Chill, but Grave Chill is the negative affinity to this guy, which means, or he's the positive affinity over Grave Chill, which means you're probably going to get crit a fair amount or strong hit a lot. You're going to weak hit, which means you won't place your poisons. And I think you probably fail, but you could use Anax. If you've got a Rish of the Bold sitting in the vault, you could use him. He's actually got destroys enemy max HP as well. So he's doing it all. Uh, you could use Corpse Collector, poisoning on her A3 and a leech on her A1, which means she's got double ways to heal. Like there's, there's a bunch of stuff you can do. You just need to like understand what you've got in your roster. If you've done Doom Tower for a while and you've got Eurost, he is your answer. He's basically a beast in this fight like he's who i actually use for doom tower properly but what we need to do is we need to build out add champion i'm going to run a level 50 anax here for normal in regen gear and i know i just had comments yesterday like oh all you do is slap regen on people i don't know how else to keep people alive that's why we're using regen it's the way to keep people alive if you don't do damage and they don't heal themselves. Of course I'm going to use regen. Why are you not using it? Like if you don't have a set, go and farm a set because it's so good. Okay. Like those sort of comments, I'm just like, please, there's a reason we're using it because it's good for this fight. If you don't have any, which is possible, right? Firstly, you could go and farm some, but if you don't, then you can use Guardian Gear as a weaker alternative. 10% heal instead of 15. It's quite a lot worse. 50% worse. You could use Bolster Gear. Again, 50% worse for the heal, but you will get a protected shield for the start of the fight. So that's not bad. Um, or you could use Six Piece Immortal Gear, which will give you a 9% heal. So Regen's massively better, right? Regen also gives me another two spots where I can get some of my accuracy up. So. We're going to throw perception in here. But all I'm looking for is HP percent, ideally with speed and accuracy on it. HP percent, speed and accuracy. Speed boots, ideally with HP percent and accuracy on it. Those three stats is all I want. Speed, accuracy, HP percent. Uh, I don't have any marshes on this dude. Uh, I've got one blood shield accessory. It's not leveled. I'm not using accessories because my great hall is too strong. And obviously I've got therefore more stats than you've got. So my accuracy is high because my Great Hall boosts it so much. But you can do some little tricks. So you could be like, well, now that I've found the champion I'm going to use, let's see what aura we've got. So do I have anyone that can give me an accuracy aura? It has to be in, oh, it doesn't let us do it. In all battles is what you need. So that's a shame. But anyway, an accuracy aura. So I could just be like, right, who have I got? That's all battles. That's all battles. That's faction crit, it shouldn't work. She's all battles. Yeah, so basically you want to find the one you need. I've got enough accuracy, so I could put in an HP-based aura to give me more survivability. I could put in a speed aura to make me take more turns. Like, basically use what you've got, yeah? But let's do this. So, unfortunately, there's no way of setting AI in the Cursed City at the moment. I don't know why they've not added that. I hope they do soon. But what I want to do is just poison whenever I can. So my A2 as often as possible. And poison ends up being 
the way that we kill him. It's a bit of a slow and steady, but basically we're poisoning and we're healing. And watch this, I'll slow it down. Just as I hit him, my little blood shield accessory pops. I get a little shield and he doesn't counterattack me. Pop, shielded, didn't counterattack. He's just doing his normal attack. Yeah, so I think if I just go auto, because this guy will use his poison ability when he can, I think it's fine as a full auto. And we can just go and grab a cup of tea. Uh, in fact, we've got a cup of tea sitting right here. And just relax. Think of, think of days gone by. And this ends up being a super cool epic to use for this fight. So this is him against normal. Obviously, you saw the stats that I've got. So have got a good idea of, of what works. He's got a great passive, which puts this increased defense on him, uh, which means that we take less damage. Like Anax is almost built for this, honestly. Um, if we do get the provoke on us, we have to just see it out. But eventually, these poisons will kill this boss. Let's go on to hard. And I'm going to try the same champion build on hard and see if he can survive it. All we, we know, the accuracy is still fine. The speed is still fine. It's just whether we can survive the amount of damage he's going to do to us. So obviously, his attack is elevated. I think it was like what, 30 or 40% more attack on hard versus uh, normal. So it's going to be more difficult to achieve or more difficult to survive. Plus he's placing this true fear on us here. It's nastier. Still looking in decent shape. It should, interestingly, it should take about the same amount of time to kill him because poisons just do a percentage of HP. Obviously the weak hits give me a decent chance. It might be that I just need a bit more, yeah, so I need a bit more health, honestly. So it might be that you need to take in a six star, do the same job against hard. I do have a six star leveled out, so we're gonna try that now. Okay, so I've got my six star one out. I made sure he's three star ascended so that we get the, um, the passive kicking in, which is actually awesome on him. Exactly the same pieces I've moved onto him. Get his blood shield accessory. Doesn't matter which one. Uh, I won't take a bigger one though, because. That's cheating. So now what we've got is what 48k health, same speed, same accuracy, just more, more chance to survive, I guess. Pop him out, throw the new one in, and see how we go. So obviously, with regen, the more turns you take, the more you heal. And the more health you've got, the more you heal for. So that's why they're you know, pumping someone up to six star here just makes a massive difference. Even though you know we've we got slightly better tank stats, so our defense is up, our HP is up. Everything just is more tanking. You can see at six star, this is a cakewalk. We've got absolutely no threat. No way that we're not going to survive this. And we're doing it quite quick. So you can see this is, yeah, we're just in no danger. No danger at all. So this guy is definitely a good answer. I think I've got another one though. I think I've got someone else who we can bring in in a different way, which is cool. So it's not going to be the same as what you see here. It's someone who's got self-sustain. So let's move on to this guy. Okay, so we're back on normal. This is a bit of a different strategy. I don't know if it's going to work, uh, but this could be quite fun uh, to see something a little bit different. I'm going for a low B. So this time we're going to use Vrask, and uh, let's see how we get on with this. So I have built him. Uh, he's level 40, so let's, let's find him. So we've built him with Toxic Gear. Toxic Gear is how we're going to do our damage. I've got Immortal for the other pieces. We've got Crit Rate on the gloves. He's got to crit. Uh, he's got HP percent and speed. So what happens here is every time he hits with a crit, he heals for 10% of his HP. Yeah. And uh, that's it. So even if you still want a blood shield accessory, really, you don't, I guess it's less important for a blood shield, but you still want one, ideally, because then you're not just getting a load of counter attacks on you. But this might work. So we're against normal here. I don't know if it's going to be enough stats. We'll see. But the, the toxic set is giving us our poisons. He's healing himself every time he hits. And so, again, this might just be someone sitting in your vault that's not really being used that now can grab a use. And I'm running a level 40. I might have to go up to level 50. We'll see. Again, ideally, we don't want him using his A2 at all. We just want him using his A1 because then we get the extra turn meter. Because I want it to be auto friendly, I don't want to sit here having to play it for the next 10 minutes while he just thumps someone with his A1. There's not much uh, kind of like playing in that. 
But I don't know. Does he work at 40? Or I mean, at 50, this is a cakewalk, by the way. But at 40, he's kind of giving it a go. He's kind of holding his own a bit. I think he's going to die. Eventually, I think he dies at 40. But damn, it's flipping close. I guess we'll let this one run through for a bit and see how long he survives. Okay, so he didn't quite survive at 40. I mean, honestly, I could make him survive, but I don't think that's right for this video. But I could just pump some more stats into him and, and make sure that he did survive. But um, because our speed is kind of low, but I think more realistically, what you're going to do is just have to take him up to level 50. And at 50, I think he survives fine. Now, unfortunately, I was looking at this because I thought, oh, this guy might be able to do hard as well. But it seems like he's not in the mix for hard. So there must be a change of. Uh, so, oh, hard's just attack or support. So he's only available for normal, but a good another option, like a good different option if you uh, don't have, you know, one of the kind of like key poisoners that we've spoken about already. Might be that you've got a Vrask, you've had a, a Vrask for ages. It won't be a quick run, but at level 50, he's definitely getting the job done. So, you know, if, if this is something you're stuck on and you particularly want to just try and get through it, this could also work for Doom Tower, by the way. Same, same strat. Could be totally fine for Doom Tower, so anyone can do this. And you can see here at level 50, he's got literally no problems at all. Never kind of under that kind of 100% health. Again, no marshes or anything. Uh, let's just see what his total stats were at 50. Nearly 50k health, 195 speed, and 100% crit. That's all we care about uh, on this build. Yeah, it doesn't need accuracy or anything like that. So super easy one to get in the mix with. So I guess the last option then is, you know, we spoke about um doing this team like properly and that would involve shields and all that type of stuff so you know going back to the original part of the video where we're like right okay well who, who have we got that can shield us and you know create like a proper team and uh, i think did we call out zelatar here yeah zelatar would be a good one so zelatar with valkyrie could do it basically what you need to make a proper team work is a shield which goes on for a long time basically almost as long as the, the turn count with an extender of that shield, which would be your Valkyrie here. Um, she extends buffs. Is there any other, is it Valkyrie or Valerie? Valerie, sorry. Uh, is there any other buff extender? Can I filter on that? Increased buff duration. So Sandlash is also in there. Yes, yeah, so Sandlash could do that same job of extending the buff. Both of them could come in and make it even easier. Yeah, so the longer you keep your shields up for, the better. But he will rip those shields off if you do not keep his turn meter under control. So you see how much harder it is because now you're looking for a number of things. Now we're looking to decrease turn meter, decrease turn meter. So then you're looking at, right, well, who have I got who can keep his turn meter down? And honestly, when you start looking through these champs, like they don't really do it well enough. This guy has got 100% um, turn meter drop, but it's on a four turn, which is long. Uh, does he do any other? I think he does a weaken and stuff, but yeah. So building this type of team out, I think, is way harder. Yeah, in terms of other turn meter droppers, yeah, I mean, Nephril's good, but again, Legendary, I think his is very good. Got here, a turn meter, 55% chance of doing a turn meter drop, like nothing, it's not going to work. This one's not bad, but yeah, I think it's way harder, honestly. So you could put a shield on, and you could, you know, keep that shield up if you've got the right champions. But then you've got to keep his turn meter down as well. And then you've also got to destroy his max HP. Yeah, so just suddenly it's like, well, bloody hell, how many things do I need to bring? I need to bring a whole ton of stuff to make it work. And I think that's way harder than just building a poisoner with a blood shield accessory and stuff. So hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully that's going to help you get through this stage. But yeah. Brask or Anax, I think, are the two best options. Corpse Collector coming in uh, behind that. But you will need a Blood Shield accessory, and ideally you're going to need one of the sets I've shown today. Anyway, guys, I've been Hades. Let me know if there's any other areas you want me to cover, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>